Hello, welcome to the fourth week of these uh, question and answer sessions, Ask Mark. As usual, the mentors have selected four questions for me, and I will read them to you and answer them in turn. Question one. I would like to know more on how the seven basic emotions were arrived at. Play is a serious business. Think of sports and the global power messages at the Olympic Games when ranking countries' medals achievements. What led to the understanding and it being seven rather than another number of emotions? So I need to clarify um, there are more than seven emotions, more than seven different uh, natural varieties of, of affective feeling. But um, it's a, 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 it comes down to questions of taxonomy, of classification of these, of these feeling states. Um, the uh, taxonomy that I subscribe to, the one that, I, that, that guides my own work, was devised by Jak Panksepp, P-A-N-K-S-E-P-P, Jak Panksepp. And he classifies affects um, into three broad categories. The first he calls homeostatic affects, and those are very simple um, affective states that have to do with the regulation of the bodily economy. Um, prototypical examples of homeostatic affects are hunger or thirst. Um, think about the feeling of hunger. It's, a, it's an unpleasant feeling. And think about the feeling of thirst. It's another unpleasant feeling, but they're quite different from each other. So these are examples of homeostatic affects. They tell you what your body needs, and there's a, a, a very obvious thing that you need to do um, in response to the problem posed by those affects. In the case of hunger, you have to eat. In the case of thirst, you have to drink. Um, the second category uh, in Panksepp's taxonomy, he calls sensory affects. And whereas the homeostatic affects have to do with the internal environment of the body, Sensory affects have to do with the outside world. Examples of sensory affects are surprise or disgust. Surprise? Oh! Disgust? What? All of these uh, are built into your brain. Uh, the, the, you don't need to learn how to feel disgust. And it is a feeling that is a natural kind of feeling that every human, and in fact not only human, uh, uh, brain is capable of generating. Now, the really interesting ones are the ones that lie between these internally directed homeostatic affects and these externally directed sensory affects, to which, again, are attached very simple reflexive behaviors. These ones in between we, uh, we call the basic emotions or the instinctual emotions. Those are the psychologically most interesting ones. And uh, when I say there are seven, there are seven of those, according to Jak Panksepp. Um, there's not general agreement about this. Some people would want to include, for example, disgust as a basic emotion. Um, it's, it's, uh, there's disagreement about how to classify these things. What there's not disagreement about is that they exist. And then there's also some disagreement about how we should theorize uh, what the function is of these basic affective states, uh, which, as I say, we all agree exist. It's a bit of a mugs game classification and, and taxonomy. So I wouldn't um, make too much of the fact that, according to Panksepp, there's seven basic emotions. That means seven complex instinctual emotions. I don't think we're ever going to get agreement about it. What all of these affects have in common is not only that they're built into the brain, that there's a specific feeling state and a specific behavior that goes with them, um, but, but also that they have specific chemistries and specific circuitry in the brain. These are, not, these are not theoretical abstractions. These are not philosophical concepts. These are natural kinds. And it's very valuable knowledge to be able to know what the natural affective kinds are. Um, moving beyond the classification question, um, the, I, there's also a comment in this question about play and how important it is. And I certainly agree with that. And that's also one of the values of, of approaching these sorts of questions biologically. As I said, to be able to know what the natural kinds of affect and emotion are is very valuable knowledge. Not least because when you approach these things scientifically, you get surprises. 
um, unlike in a, a philosophy where you work out a nice, neat, um, uh, uh, clean system, uh, in science you get surprises. Play, I would never in my wildest dreams have predicted that play is a basic instinctual emotion because it appears to be such a, such a frivolous thing. But all mammals have to play. They need to play. There's an absolute drive to play among mammals. And the scientific, um, the interesting scientific question then becomes why? What is play for? And that, as I said earlier, uh, that's where disagreement arises again. Different people have different views as to what play is for. But the sorts of things that the questioner uh, alludes to um, uh, are an important part of play. Play uh, seems to have a lot to do with the establishment of the pecking order, the establishment of, of social dominance hierarchies. And if you think back to your school days, um, if I think back to mine, you know, the play the playground at school was a very serious place for us kids. Um, very important things happened within the world of the children, the social group, who's who in the zoo, where do you fit, uh, who are you, uh, are you in the in crowd or are you, are you out, who's, who's going to bully you, who are you um, able to get one over and so on. Um, it looks to us like a frivolous business, but play is very serious to children. And then the later adult versions of this, through adolescence, it becomes much more competitive, organized games, like the questioner refers to in relation to the Olympics. But then, you know, it generalizes to the whole of life. You could say, in a way, the claiming of territory and the establishment of social dominance hierarchies in that territory, in other words, who's going to get first bite, who's going to get best access to the resources available in that territory, you could say that that's the whole of human history. Uh, all of our nation states, all of our wars, um, all of our uh, economies, etc. It's all about that. So I agree, very serious business indeed. <laughs>